talked about the idea that a person should um, try to start the Seder immediately when they get home, as quickly as possible. Um, if possible, before the Seder, should, they should try to be as prepared as possible in order to go quickly into the Seder, in order to get it started quickly so the children don't fall asleep and so we don't waste time. We also talked about the idea of come prepared for the Seder, come prepared with things to say, what to say, come prepared with a plan of how much you're going to let different kids speak and how much you're going to try to, how you're going to try to incorporate the children and the guests and being aware of what's going to happen in order to plan for it. We talked also about the idea of setting the ambiance properly. So dressing properly, having things hush of looking, you know, maybe buying special pillowcases. If people are bringing pillows to the table, instead of everyone coming with a different color pillow that they sleep on usually, so you come with nicer pillowcases, a nice tablecloth, fancy silverware, fancy car and put away muksa things, cover up uh, computers or whatever in order to set the ambiance in the in the room that there's a certain feeling that it's a holy and it's a hush of night and it's it's a you have a feeling of respect and awe at the same time as a feeling of joy and simcha so it's a joyous simcha but at the same time it's a respectful night we talked about that a little bit last week, and then we talked a little bit, little bit about what are the main um, messages that we're trying to transmit to our children on the night of the Seder, or not only to our children, but even to ourselves. What's the main goal of the Seder night? What's the main message of the Seder night? <clears throat> so we spoke last week about the idea that it says in the Torah, one of the most important psukim that are in the Torah, Anoichi Hashem Alekecha, Asher Tzichah Meretz Mitzrayim Beis Avadim. So first of the Aseret Adibris, this is a sentence that Hashem actually said to the whole Klai Yisrael. The whole Klai Yisrael heard it directly from Hashem. And this is the first of the Aseret Adibris. I am Hashem, your God, who took you out of Mitzrayim, from the land of slaves, from the house of slaves. So the question we asked, was there's another very very fundamental question the pasuk and that pasuk is Barishas bara lekim esa shemayim vasarit in the beginning Hashem created shemayim vasarit Hashem created the whole world and let's try to analyze for a second what's the idea of the seres adibris for a second so what's the first I'm not the whole seres adibris what's the idea of the first pasuk in the seres adibris so the Ramban says that the first pasuk of the Seres Adibris is actually a machlekes between the Ramban and the Rambam if the first pasuk of the Seres Adibris is a mitzvah or not. That was a machlekes right away from the first statement. <laughs> Everything is a machlekes. <laughs> so there's a shaila: is, is the first of the Seres Adibris a mitzvah or not? And there are those that hold that the first of the Seres Adibris is not a mitzvah. It's a statement. Because if you look at it, it's an interesting statement. I am Hashem, your God, who took you out of Mitzrayim. What do you do? What should you do about that statement? Is that like, it doesn't say to do something, it doesn't say not to do something. It's just a statement. So some people learn that the first of the Sesha Divers is, this, is the underlying statement of the rest of the Torah. So before you could accept the Xerus, the rules, you first have to accept the kingship. Prerequisite. It's a prerequisite. So the Ramban says it's like a story, brings a medrash that um, a king, there's a certain country that's looking for a king. So before they pick a king, what they do is they, they have a bunch of different kings come in and interview. So one king says, I would rule the country like this, another one says, I would rule the country like this, and another king comes in and he says, look, if you're going to accept me because of the rules, you're not accepting me as a king, you're accepting my rules. So, this is the way I'm explaining the Marshall. So, what you have to do is, first accept me as a king. King means I make the rules. Whatever I say goes. A king doesn't mean like we have now in uh, democracy. You vote him in, you vote him out. A king means a dicta dictator, a real king. Whatever he says goes. You don't like it, you don't listen to him, you get killed. It's, the, it's a very different kind of idea than we're used to. Even if there are places where there are kings, I'm not sure if they're on this level. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. But 
The idea is that it's a real king. So first you have to accept me as a king. If you're just accepting my rules, then it's like a democracy. You like my rules. When I change the rules, you get rid of me. That's not how it works. So first you have to accept my kingship, and then you could accept my rules. So therefore it says, as a prerequisite, I'm Hashem. I took you out of Mitzrayim. I'm Hashem, your God. That's point number one. First you've got to accept that point. Once you accept that point, that's why I'm allowed to tell you the other 613 rules. So, there's a fascinating, um, there's a fascinating verb from Avigdor Miller. And he says like this, it says in the Haggadah, this is not the simple shot, but it says in the Haggadah like this, Manishtan Alada Zeh, right? We ask, why do we eat matzah? Why do we, right? All other nights we eat chametz and matzah. Tonight we only eat matzah. All other nights we eat all vegetables. Tonight we only eat more. All other nights we don't dip. At least we don't have to dip. Tonight we dip twice. All other nights we don't lean. Tonight we lean. Or they used to ask, all other nights we only eat the common Pesach. And now we eat the common Pesach. So why, so why are we doing all these things? That's a simple question. So the question is, what's the answer? If you look in the next part of the Gutter, we say like this, we were slaves to Parliament, so I'm and Hashem took us out. So how does that, where's, how does that answer the question? You still didn't tell me, why do we eat matzah, why do we eat more? So there's different answers to this question given, and maybe another week we'll talk more about Manashtana and exactly if it's really a question. The truth is, if you look at Manashtana, it doesn't say the words, why do we eat matzah, why do we eat more? It just says, why is tonight different? And it points out the differences, and instead of being four questions, it's one question. That's how some people answer it. Just a quick um, synopsis of another answer. You got that? It's not really four questions. It's one question. Why is tonight di What's different about tonight? And here's the four differences that I happen to notice. Mm -hmm. And now, what's different about tonight? And the answer is tonight's a special night because on this night, Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim. That's one way of learning it. But Rav Dumas has a very interesting answer. He says, "Where's the answer? What's the answer to the four questions?" He says, "There's not four questions. There's 613 questions. And the question is, what are we doing over here?" Why do we listen to the Torah? Why do we keep the mitzvahs? And there's one answer. For 613 mitzvahs, there's one answer. Avraham Ayin of Parah Mitzrayim, Hashem Hashem took us out. That's one answer for 613 questions. Which is the same as the first commandment. Which is the same as the first commandment. This commandment, the Neich Hashem based on is the prerequisite of the whole Torah. Um, if you take a look in um, Parshas Vashchanan, so we talk about the four sons in the Haggadah. So the four sons in the Haggadah, we bring down different places where it says, Ki Yisholcha Bincha, or Vamarta Lebincha, Vigarata Lebincha, different times where it talks about a father talking to a son. Three times it starts off that the son asks a question, mm -hmm. and one time it starts off that the father just starts, and that's the Shani Day he doesn't even know how to ask, so the father just starts. Mm -hmm. The other three times it's the son asking. So three of them are in Shemais, Seder or Shemais, and one of them is Veschanan. The one of Veschanan is the one we attribute to the Chacham. And if you look over there, it has, if you look over here in Shemais, so in Parshas Boi and, um, I think it's at the end of Parshas Boi, those three, and it's talking about leaving Mitzrayim, right? One's here, Vahayik Yishalcha bin Chamacha Leymar, Ma'azois, that's the time, and you say Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim. We're talking about Mitzrayim over here, right? And then the the, the Russians, I think, right before that. Somewhere over here. So yeah. It's talking about you should. He's talking about Pesach. But if you look at the Chacham, the Chacham it says like this, No, I'm sorry, that's by, um, by the Chacham it says, is there a Chacham here? I see one over there, blue one. So by the Chacham, it's not talking at all about Karman Pesach. It's not talking anything about Pesach over here. It's just talking about different things. And it says, it's 
talking about all kinds of different things. If you look over here, you'll see. It has absolutely nothing to do with Pesach. And the Chacham says like this, when your son asks you, What are the edus, the chukim, the mishpatim that Hashem commanded us? So that's everything. What's the Torah, basically, right? What's the, all the different commandments in the Torah? What are they? And what do we answer him? We're servants of the Parmet. So Hashem took us out. What is that? He's asking about the Torah. We tell him about Yitzhak Mitzrayim. The answer is because Yitzhak Mitzrayim is the prerequisite, is the answer. There's 613 questions, like Ravik de Miller says. Why do we blow shofar? Why do we sit in the sukkah? Why don't we wear shatnas? Why do we do shkul chakan? Any mitzvah you want, there's one answer. You know why we keep the mitzvah? Interesting question I'll ask you. I just heard from... Just heard, oh, no, who said, I just heard this from someone, told me in Baltimore, Baltimore. Someone just told me a story that the Rebbe asked him a Shiloh, Ritzi Kershalevsky asked the Shiloh, Ritzi, not Kershalevsky, Ritzi. Someone just told me the story. The Rebbe asked, oh, Moshe Bain, we just had him speak about he just said over the story. His Rebbe asked the Shiloh, why do we learn Torah? So everyone was saying, why do we learn, Jews have to learn Torah, why? What's, why do we learn Torah? What, what, why? So, anyone have an answer? And hopefully, if you listen to this year enough, you, could, you should be able to have an answer. But. I mean, it says Shem's wisdom. We want to connect to Shem's wisdom. We want to connect to Shem's wisdom. No. It's the truth. Is that a Egypt? Because <laughs> he told us to. Because he told us to, that's all. The, the other things are nice, but that's not why we learn. We learn Torah because the Shem told us to. Everything that we do, there's one underlying reason behind it all, is because Hashem told us to. And that's what's happening over here. He's saying, I took you out of Mitzrayim, I acquired you, and I, I'm your king, and you're my servant, and that's the answer to everything. So there's 613 questions, and there's one answer. That's the answer to everything in the Torah, and that's why the Seder night, it's such a fundamental night. It's such a critical night because that's the answer to all our questions. That's the source of our amuna and our belief system for the whole year. There's a very interesting story, also that that's come, that that's said over. But there's a the Gemara says that in a year where there's no shofar, the beginning of the year, it's like a little bit of a scary year. Call shana shorash mitzvah. Any shana that doesn't have a shofar, so when don't we blow shofar? If Rosh Hashanah falls out on Shabbos, right? So people, people who really were connected to Shafer, it bothers them tremendously. There's no Shafer. No, yeah, there's everywhere there's a second yeah, this day. Is everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere there's no Shafer. But there's a second day. Yeah, but there's, there's no real Shafer, Madaraisa. So, so... There's not Shafer, there's a second day in... in no. No. Madaraisa is a second day. You've been in? Okay, because I thought because it's... One day, Rosh Hashanah and the Torah. Right. We have two days because of problems of days and night. So also because of... I, I thought the Rosh Hashanah was an exception. No, no. Different, different discussion. So, so the is we don't have a cipher. So, so somebody got up and he said like this. this is, I, I forgot who it was, but this story is said, and, and I think it was a few different people. He got up and showed and he said, Why would the Rosh Hashanah? Because Hashem said. Why would the Rosh Hashanah? Because Hashem said. Because Hashem said. Why do we blow Shabbat Hashanah? Because Hashem said, why don't we blow Shabbat Hashanah this year? Because Hashem said not to. Finished. Mm -hmm. So the b bottom line is, we start to think of Shafer, that brings up our Zechonah, and it's, uh, no, all the different things, but that's not why we blow Shafer. We blow Shafer because Hashem said to blow Shafer. And if this year we don't blow Shafer, because Hashem said not to, to listen to Hashem, Hashem said not to blow Shafer. So you don't blow Shafer. Finished. There's nothing to be worried about. So that's always the fundamental thing behind all of our mitzvahs. The whole idea of learning the taimei ha mitzvahs, the reasons of the mitzvahs, is only as taimim. Taimim means a taste. We never ever do any mitzvahs because of their reasons. It doesn't mean you shouldn't learn the reasons of the mitzvahs. The reasons of the mitzvahs make it more geschmack, they give it more taste, they make it more applicable, they make it easier to digest maybe, especially for people in our times who are a little bit weaker. But that doesn't mean that that's why we do it. The reason why we do it is because Hashem said. So, so there's 600, so, so going back to the main idea, so there's 613 questions, and that's what the son's saying. You look in Parshish Zeshchanan, Ki Yishalcha bin Chamacha Lamar, 
what are all these rules that Hashem is commanding us? And you answer him, and Hashem took us out, and He gave us signs, and He took us out, and He commanded us in all these things. Hashem commanded us to do all these things, to be good for you, to do everything we said. But what gives Him the right to command us all these things? Because Hashem took us out from a base of Adam, and He revealed Himself, and He acquired us by doing that, and therefore we have to listen to Him. So, so there's another part that says Zeus Chukas Atayra is one of the psukim in one of the first parshas. The parsha there's a parsha named Chukas, right? Um, we just leaned from parshas Chukas. There's a parsha of Para Duma. So we just had parshas Para. So Zeus Chukas Atayra says. So some people learn Zeus Chukas Atayra. The whole Torah is a chayk. Because all the mitzvahs are really chikes. Every mitzvah that we do, we do for one reason, because Hashem commanded us. And that's, how you're, that's your attitude that you're supposed to have to the Torah. Why do I keep the mitzvahs? Because Hashem commanded me to. And the truth is, if anyone ever asks this question again, why do you learn Torah? Because Hashem commanded to. Why do you go shofar? Because Hashem commanded to. Why do you sing Because Hashem commanded to. That's the only answer. There's no other answer to any reason. Why do we do any mitzvah? The only reason is because Hashem commanded us to. And if you start saying, well, the reason why I keep kosher is because it's healthier, and because of da da da, and da, 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 it's all nice. But that's not why. Why don't you steal? It's not because it's bad to steal. It's also true. But the reason why you don't steal is because Hashem commanded us not to steal. Not because you get caught. Uh, yeah, that's also <laughs> part of it. <laughs> the, n- no, but stealing, some of the mitzvahs are more adverse to us. Killing. But that's not the reason. The reason why you don't kill is but maybe you wouldn't kill anyways. But the reason why you don't kill now is because Hashem told us not to. Person is not even supposed to say the halacha is that if you walk past a restaurant and you want to eat there, you have a little bit of a desire to eat there. You're not to say I don't want to eat there. So say I want to eat there, but I'm not gonna because F- I want to eat there, but I'm not gonna because I'm not supposed to because mm-hmm. that's the halacha. Mm-hmm. So so this is an idea over here, and this is the idea that some people learn. Even the people who learn that it is a first mitzvah, but it's still the first mitzvah. Even the people who say that it is a first mitzvah. And they say it's not a prerequisite, even if it's a first mitzvah, it's still the number one mitzvah. The number one mitzvah is, before we can get up to any other mitzvahs, is a noich Hashem lekech Hashem tzichem er tzichem er tzichem I'm Hashem, your God, who took you out of Mitzrayim, took you out of the house of slavery, and therefore, now we could talk about all the rest of the mitzvahs. So those who view it as a mitzvah would view it as, as we said, the commandment to do things because Hashem says? Those who do it as a mitzvah view it as a commandment to believe in Hashem. A noich Hashem lekech means, Accept the fact that I am Hashem Lakecha. Believe in Hashem. It's the first mitzvah, is mitzvah believing in Hashem. Those of you that is not a mitzvah, that's called the mitzvah Munash Hashem. Those of you that is not a mitzvah, it's not one of the 630 mitzvahs, but it's a prerequisite to them is the idea of yes. Munash Hashem. So that's a little bit, I mean, it happens to be a little bit interesting in the Pshat, in, in just going through the Haggadah, that could be one of the answers. That's how Vidya Miller answers the question of the Manashtana. So we asked four questions by the Manashtana, right? Why do we do all these different things? And there's one answer, because there's not really four questions, it's really 613 questions. What's the answer? Why do we eat Mar? Because we're saying Bar Mitzrayim. Why do we eat Matzah? Because we're saying Why do we dip? Why do we lean? Why do we do anything? Because we're saying Bar Mitzrayim. The guy could have asked more questions. Could have asked whatever he wanted, and we would have answered him the same thing. And that's really what the Chacham means when he asks his questions. So Yitzhiz Mitzrayim is really the fundamental night the night of the Seder is the fundamental night to drive into this point, into our heads, that we were slaves to the Prophet Shem, and Hashem took us out. So what's the message of that line, though? We're just showing different places where it sort of says the same thing, but what's the message of that line? So we talked a little bit last week about the question of why does it say, I'm Hashem, your God, who took out of Mitzrayim? It should say, I'm Hashem, your God, who created Shemayim Varetz. Let it say, So this question is brought down by the Ibn Ezra, the Ramban, the Kuzari, others ask this question, why isn't it say, I'm Hashem your God? What's it bigger? I took out of Mitzrayim and I created everything. So if you're trying to say a prerequisite for everything, why are we focusing so much on Eretz Mitzrayim? Let's focus on, I'm Hashem your God who created the world. Taking out of Egypt is the creation of the Jewish people as opposed to just the creation of man. That's a good answer. It's one of the answers. That's what we're going to talk about today. So last week, before we get up to that, we spoke about the idea that 
there's a different answer, a totally different answer, an unrelated answer, and the answer is like this. Just to review what we spoke about last week, to contrast to what this week. So last week we spoke about the answer of who uh, I created Shemai Varts. Who saw that Hashem created Shemai Varts? Nobody. So the Archaim, the, the Evan Ezra, when he talks about it here, says a chacham, a person who's smart, could look at the plan and purpose in the world, could look at the complexity of DNA, could look at all the different things that go on in our bodies and in the world and in the different systems that are going on and he could see Hashem and obviously we could see Hashem I'm sorry from my own skin I could see from my own flesh I could see God that's what I mean. yeah. from, from, the, from the world and you could see Hashem from the world but we didn't see openly Hashem create my heart so no one could ever see that so therefore but therefore it didn't say I, I'm Hashem who created my heart it said I'm Hashem who took you out of Mitzrayim and the Ramban says Mitzrayim, the Yitzhiyah's Mitzrayim, any time Hashem goes and openly reveals Himself, that is a clear and proven, He calls it Edim Nehmanim, true witnesses that Hashem exists, Hashem knows what's going on in the world, Hashem is involved in the world and can control the world, and that Hashem, and that Hashem could talk to a Navi, because there's different people who deny different things, but if Hashem goes and openly tells a Navi before, and this is what I'm going to do in four days, and then he does that, so it shows us that Hashem talks to a Navi, and it shows that Hashem created the world and runs the world, and that he exists. So therefore, it said, Hashem Alekecha, I'm Hashem your God who created, who took you out of Mitzrayim, because Mitzrayim, you saw. You saw Yitzhiyah's Mitzrayim, and therefore, Yitzhiyah's Mitzrayim is not a, like Bria Shmaivarts and nobody could see. Tim Zaman's open miracle was in front of the whole world. Shamu Amim Yer Gazan. Chil Achaz Zeshe The nations heard and trembled. There was a fear that held on to the people in Plashas. All the different nations heard and saw. This was documented, passed down from father to son. And that's why the Ramban says it's so important on the night of the Seder to pass this on to our children and our children to their children because Hashem's not going to go along in every single generation and make an open miracle and reveal himself to the whole world. He's not going to do that. So he did it at one point in history. And then he said, now you go and tell that to your children. And your children should tell it to their children. They should tell it to their children. Keep passing it along. And not only that, that you should keep passing it along, but put it on your doorposts. Tie it onto your hands. Tie it onto your heads. Say it every morning and every night. Focus on it. Keep remembering. Yitzis mitzrayim. Yitzis mitzrayim. Laman tizkas yitzis mitzrayim. Kol yimei chayecha. You have to remember that Hashem took seven times all the days of your life. And we learn in Nagara, not only the days of your life, but even, right, not only not only the days, but even the nights. Not only this world, but even Moshe Mashiach. Because the idea is that Yitzhiyah's Mitzrayim is the foundation of our Amuna. Yitzhiyah's Mitzrayim is the foundation. That's where we saw Hashem openly reveal Himself. And when Hashem openly reveals Himself, that's how we know that Hashem exists. That's how we know that Hashem created Shema Barak's. So that's one idea. And that's one message that we have to pass on to our children. How do we know that Hashem exists? How do we know Hashem created the world? How do we know for sure that Hashem created the world? Because we saw with our own eyes that Hashem did it. We saw with our own eyes that Hashem turned over all the different things in the Bria. He made fire and water go together by the hail. He made Moksim by the in the Psukim of the Haggadah so we say Vahamotsim that's dam that's blood right and I notice you, you look in the Psukim of this you're trying to remember this I should really bring in the Haggadah <coughs> but um, it says by the Psukim Vahamotsim that's the dam why is Motsim dam because dam was a wonder I'm drinking blood I'm drinking water and the Mitzvah over there is drinking blood it's unbelievable I sell it to him it turns into water he, Right? He, he takes it from me, it's still blood. It was openly revealed, all these kinds of miracles, everyone saw it. Now you might say, well, we didn't see it, and what you have to tell your children is, it was transmitted. You'd also never heard of George Washington, you never saw George Washington. How do you know he exists? Because it's transmitted, and it's in documented, it's in books, and it's passed on, and it's in so many different places. The Jews have been in so many different countries, and the same transmission, father to son, father to son, father to son, that you know for a fact that it's correct. Nobody denies it. Even the Goyim believe in our Torah. And they accept our Torah. Nobody denies it. 2,600 years ago our Torah was translated into Greek. And then it was in the hands of the Goyim. We couldn't have edited it even if we wanted to. 
I'm not sure how many years ago actually. But many, many years ago the Torah was translated. So that's one idea, uh, one message of the Seder night, that Yetzirah Mitzrayim is the Yesoyed Amuna and the foundation of our entire Amuna. And, and the foundation of, and the most important fact in the world is Gracious Baruch Kim Asa Shemavar, Hashem created the world. That's Yesoyed Yesoyed, the foundation of all foundations is that Hashem created the world, Hashem is, and Hashem, and Hashem runs the world. That's the number one most important fact in the world. So that's one shot that we spoke about last week. This week we'll talk about it. There's also another couple questions over here. It says like this. In the first of the verse, it says, "Anoicha Hashem al kecha, I'm Hashem your God. Hashem tzisich meretzam, but took you out of Mitzrayim, mi beis avana, from a land, from a house of slavery. Why does it say mi beis avana, from a house of slavery? Especially if we're saying the pshat like we said originally that I'm Hashem who revealed Himself. So just say I'm Hashem who took you out of Mitzrayim. Why mi beis avana, from a house of slavery? What's the significance of that? So the answer is, what's your name? Phil? Paul. Like Dr. Paul is saying. That um, when, what? <laughs> that um, he says that when Hashem took us out, he says, but Tommy based upon, why is it based upon? Because when we were in the time, we were slaves to power. We were slaves to power. We were totally controlled over another by other people. I mean, what did Hashem do? He took us out. He made us His servants. He took us out of Mitzrayim and He acquired us. So this is a totally different answer. Why does it say Hashem? I am Hashem who created the world. The answer is because if it said Hashem, I am Hashem who created the world, that's for everybody. And that's over here. It says, I am Hashem who took you out of Mitzrayim. That's for you. I took you. I should say, I took you. Chaf is means you. I took you out of Mitzrayim from the land of slavery. I took you and I acquired you. When I took you out, I made you my nation. And that act of taking us out of Mitzrayim was the act of making us into Klal Yisrael. And therefore, Hashem saying to us, why do you have to listen to the whole Torah? Because I took you out of Mitzrayim and I made you mine. You, because Hashem took us out and took us out of Mitzrayim until Hashem came along, we were in the hand of slavery, slaves. The evil of the Hashem would not have taken us out, the Haggadah says, we would still be there. You know, we would still be there, whatever that means exactly, but we would still be there. So Hashem took this nation out of another nation, the Kachas Goy Mikarev Goy, and turned us into Klal Yisrael, and therefore that process of becoming Klal Yisrael was part of it was Hashem taking us out and, and making us His. And that's why we have to listen to him, because we're his chosen nation and he owns us. And without him, we would be nothing. All the other nations were created in their own lands, with their own, with their own kingdoms, whatever they had. But we were created in Mitzrayim. We were created nowhere. We, normally a small family goes down to a big country like that and just gets absorbed. But we stayed together, we stayed separate, it's a different share maybe. We stayed separate, we stayed together, and therefore we, we, we were able to become a unique nation, and then Hashem took us out and created us into a nation. And that's why it says, Mebe Savana, from the house of slavery, until then you were slaves, and I bought you. It's like if you own a slave and I buy him from you, now he's my slave. So it's very important to understand that when we went from Mitzrayim, when we left Mitzrayim, we didn't go from Avdus to what we call Chayrus, we didn't go from slavery to freedom. We went from becoming Avde Par to being Avde Hashem. Hashem, just was this trend change. Instead of being slaves to power, they became slaves to Hashem. Change ownership. Right. But the idea is like this. There's two kinds of freedom. It's an interesting concept, a little bit of a deep concept. There's something called freedom to, and there's something called freedom from. Freedom to means I want to be free to do whatever I want. So therefore, I can do anything, no one could stop me. That's called freedom to. Freedom from is, for example, when a parent will put a filter or will not have the internet in their house. Why don't they have the internet in their house? Because they understand that their children may, or themselves, may get entrapped with the desires and the Yetzirahs that are on the internet. So you might call yourself free to do whatever you want, but the truth is you're not really free to do whatever you want. You're a slave to your desires. You're a slave to your passions. You're a slave to your emotions. 
You could be a slave to any of those things. Your desires, your passions, your emotions, to money, to shopping, to alcohol, to any kinds of avarice that there are. And that slavery is not freedom. That's a much worse slavery. And that's the idea of something called freedom from. You're free from your taivas. The Torah empowers us to be able to be free from our Yetzirahs. To be able to be real people, to be free people. And that's why it says, Ein ben Chayren, it says, Charas al Haluchas. The, the words of the Torah were Charas al Haluchas, were carved into the Luchas. And the Gemara says, Atiki Charas al Chayrus, free. Ein ben Chayren, you're only ben Chayren if you're Isaac Batar, if you're someone who's who kills himself for the Torah, that's called the Ben Chayr. Someone who's completely subjugated to the rules of the Torah, that's called a free person. Because true freedom is freedom from. Anyone ever heard of this concept? Freedom from? It's cool. I read in a book a long time ago. Freedom to and freedom from. Freedom to means I want to do whatever I want. I'm free. I could explore, try out anything, do anything. No rules, no boundaries. Freedom from is the opposite. Freedom from is proper rules, everything within boundaries, everything controlled, everything empowering the person to have control, to be able to develop his own sense of control, to have the freedom from his Yetzirahs, not to have to be pulled after all kinds of different things that are pulling him, freedom from peer pressure, freedom from advertising, freedom from alcoholism, freedom from Yetzirahs, freedom from all kinds of different things that are pulling him in other directions and giving him the freedom to live a normal life and to exist without that. So we went from being from Avdus to Cheres. Yes, to Cheres, but true Cheres. When we say that the Seder night is a night of going from Avdus to Cheres, it doesn't mean that we became emancipated and now just go and do whatever you want. It means we went from being Avde Paro to becoming Avde Hashem. And that's what Hashem's telling us. I took you out of Mitzrayim, from this house of slavery, now you're my slaves. Now you're my servants. Avadaihim. Voloya avadim la avadim. You're my servants. Is that what we mean when we say if Hashem hadn't taken out, we'd still be slaves to those gates of harvest? Maybe. It might be a shot. Interesting. So now you're my slaves. Now you're my avodah. And that's what he says, Mi beis avodah. I'm Hashem, your God. I took out time. Mi beis avodah. Now you're my servants. That we, but you still could call that going from avdus to chiris because that's what chiris is. Chiris is being avdeh Hashem. That's what true chiris is. True chiris is freedom from. So this idea that the Seder night and that Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim was the night where we were taken from slavery I'm sorry, from being Avde Paro to becoming Avde Hashem that we became Klai so that night is a, is a second I don't know, first and second, but is another fundamental point of the Seder night because what are we celebrating on the Seder night? What's the Simcha on the Seder night? What's the joy on the Seder night? What are we happy about tonight? And really we can take this a step further, but what's the Simcha? What's the joy? What's the happiness of Yom Tov in general. What is the idea of Yom Tov? What, what are we celebrating? We have these Shalosh We have three times a year where we get together. And there's even a mitzvah called Simcha. In the times of the Beis HaMikdash, you had to bring a carbon Simcha. Shalmei Simcha. Simcha, happiness, right? You brought a carbon of happiness. And for women, women don't get happy with meat and wine. So for women, even now, and even now, by the way, there's a mitzvah of Simcha with Basar and Yayin. And for women, you buy them clothing and jewelry. Children, you buy them toys or candies. Everybody, there's a mitzvah of simcha to make everybody happy for the regal. Why are we making everybody happy? What's so, what's, what are we happy about? You want to answer? What, what's the real sort of idea of the Shalosh Regal? So, let's take this. I mean, if you said before that to create it to, to do what Hashem tells us to do, we can now do that because we've been freed from... Slavery, right. Correct. So let's take that a step further, though. But let's ask one more question. You have something called the Shalosh Rogam. What's the connection between the Shalosh Rogam? Is there any connection between the Shalosh Rogam? So we know Pesach is when we got our Mitzrayim, Shuas is when we got the Torah, and Sukkis is Zecher for the Anani Akavu, Pashab Shad. Zecher for the clouds of glory. So, what, but what's the uniting factor between these? to these three Yom Tov. So there's, there's really two things that connect them. 
maybe more, but at least two things. One of them is the idea of Aliyah Laregel, going up to the base of Mikdash. And one of them is the idea of Simcha. And then there's the idea of Yamtiv, that there's the idea of something called a Moyed, a Yamtiv. So what's the connection between them? So to answer that question, we also have to throw in one more question, a side question. The question is like this. What is... There's a, there's a question the tour asks. The tour asks that Sukkot, what are we remembering? We're remembering the clouds of glory. So when do we get the clouds of glory? We got the clouds of glory. They're not yet covered right after we left Mitzrayim. So why do we have Sukkot? Sukkot time, Sukkot should be in between Pesach and Shavuot. I know what the ladies are going to answer. Yeah, too much work. <laughs> too much work. <laughs> Not such a good answer because in Tishrei it's also pretty hard. Rosh Hashanah and mm-hmm. Kippur, yeah. Sukkot, it could be. You just have like take off work for six weeks, eight weeks, and that's it, finished. Oh, yeah. Right? Would have been easier also by Leah Laregel. They used to go <coughs> anyways. Many people would stay from Pesach to Shuas. It was too it's far away. You know, go back and come back. They just stayed from Pesach to Shuas. The weather's too nice and. Mm-hmm. In the spring, you want right. to really feel it. In, in oh, so that's what the tour says. The tour says, wow. <laughs> the tour says that if we would have sukkahs in the spring, everybody goes out into the gardens in the spring. Everybody builds uh, things and goes outside. It doesn't show anything. So therefore, it really is supposed to be over there. The only reason why we have it in the in the fall is because it just doesn't. It, couldn't you also say that it was only after we received the Torah that we had this reliance and dependence with Hashem that we felt that Hashem was looking after us because we received the Torah? Well, he was looking yeah, after but after what does that have to do with Sukkot? looking after us in, in the we were His people, like we accepted the Torah, so now we had this unique relationship. No, but that's and nice. And that's what Shuas is, but what's Sukkot? How does that connect with no, Sukkot? No, I'm saying... Mm-hmm then we didn't need our homes and everything else because we could... But we were already in the Sukkot before we received the Torah. Right after we left Mitzvah, we were in the non No, that's the actuality. I mean, the recognition of that relationship. I think they recognized it when they were living in the Nanai Coven. They didn't have to... They, their clothes would grow bigger with them. I mean, right, they didn't have food. The food was... For, everything was provided for them. Food, water, clothing. They lived in a Midbar and flattened out the ground and protected them from the scorpions, protected them from the sun. It was a... Uh, Special kind of a living in a some kind of spiritual world almost. But that Eating was, still, that was still a gift to us. Like we didn't earn anything. It's only after we said. That's I, I, I understand what you're saying, but I'm not sure how that would answer. And even if that would answer, so then Sukkot should be after Shuas. As of why wait all the way till Sukkot? <coughs> what you mean right after? As I mean, I, I'm, according to what you're trying to say, that Sukkot is sort of connected to getting the Torah. So then it should be right after we got the Torah. So one answer is that really Sukkot is over there. And there's no question why Sukkot is over there. There's, there's, there's a three-part process to becoming Klal Yisrael. And the answer is like this. When do we become Jews? An interesting question. When do we become Jews? So it's really, it's really, um, it's really something we say clearly all the time. It says like this. B'tseis Yisrael Mitzrayim, it's in hollow. Right, and we're going to say it on the Seder night also. But Tzitz Yisrael in Mitzrayim, when Yisrael went out of Mitzrayim, Hoysa Yehuda lekadshay. Yehuda became Hashem's kaddish people. Yehuda became Hashem's holy ones. Beis Yaakov Mitzrayim, Mitzrayim, Beis Yaakov Mitzrayim, Beis Yaakov Mitzrayim, Beis Yaakov Mitzrayim, Yisrael Mam Shalaisa. Yisrael became his ruled over ones. When we left Mitzrayim, that's when we became Jews. The, the process of becoming Klai is when we left Mitzrayim. But when did it finish? So the Gemara in Yuvamis learns out how to become a ger. There's a bunch of gemars about learning out how do you become a ger, the process of becoming a ger. What do you do? Right? So what you're really supposed to do is mila, tvila, right? For a man, he has to do mila, and he has to go to the mikra. Where, do you, where does that come from? So it comes from what happens on Mitzvah Mitzrayim, culminating when? Matan Torah. The process of becoming Klal Yisrael was a process that started, it really started all the way back with Avraham Avinu, Yitzchak, Yaakov, the birth of Klai the creation of Klai but the, the bigger steps were Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, the, the Midbar, and Nasa Vinishma, Har Sinai. We accepted the Torah. That was the process of becoming Klai And that's why the Gemara Yavamas learns out how to become a Ger from different steps during that process. Some of it happened before they left Mitzrayim, that's when they did Mila. And some of it happened right before they got the Torah. That's when the Hazor was, the Gemara talks about Hazor, which is spritz in the Dham. 
It's a different discussion. So when do we become Klausel? The process of becoming Klausel was a process that started with Yitzhiz Mitzrayim and culminated with Matan Torah. And therefore, what the Yom Tev celebrates, what the three Yom Tev celebrate is the first step of the process, which is Yitzhiz Mitzrayim, is Pesach. The second step of the process, which was the Midbar, which is Ananeh covered with Sukkot. And the third step of the process is Shavuos, is the culmination. When we said Nasr and Nishma, that's the highest point. When we accepted the Torah, that was when we became Klausel. The three steps of becoming Klausel. And that's what Yom Tov is. Yom Tov is a celebration that we're Klausel, that we're Hashem's chosen nation. And that's what we say in Yom Tov Dami. I brought these benchers. I, they have Yom Tov. I don't want to take a quick look over here, but I don't know kind of out of time. But we say... Um, if you look at Yom Tov Davening and Yom Tov Kiddush, you'll see that that's what we say. By the way, not on Shabbos. Not on Shabbos. That's not what we say on Shabbos. We say, we say, we say a different Davening on Shabbos and on Yom Tov. Here, it's on page 20, no. There, page 14. 15, page 15. Page 15, so we say like this. Top words. Baruch atah Hashem, alakinu melech oilam, asher bachar banu mikolam, that you chose us out of every other nation, v'roi memonu mikoloshen, you raised us up of all other tongues, kitchanu mitzvah, and you gave us your mitzvah. And then it says you gave us yom toivim, l'simcha, chagun halasasa, and that's what we say. If you look in the davening, it's even more. How does yom tov davening start? We'll sit over there if anyone wants to look. Yom tov davening starts like this. You chose us from all the other nations. You loved us. You desired us. You raised us up over all the other nations. You brought us close to your servant. You called your great name on us. That is Yom Tov Davening. And then we say, and you gave us the Yom Tov. But the Yom Tov Davening is because that's what we're celebrating on Yom Tov. We're celebrating the fact that Hashem chose us to be His nation. Hashem chose us to be Kal Yisrael. <clears throat> and that's really what the idea of the whole Yom Tov is and the idea of the Seder night is. The idea of Pesach, what we're celebrating on Pesach is the beginning of the process of becoming Kal Yisrael. And what we're celebrating on Sukkot is the middle of the process of becoming Kal Yisrael. And what we're celebrating on Shavuos is the culmination of the process. We said, not Nishra, we became Kal Yisrael, we became Hashem's chosen nation. And that's why when we daven on Yom Tov, what we're supposed to think about, we're supposed to think of joy and a happiness that we're Jews, that we're Kal Yisrael, and that we're, we have the Torah, and we have the special relationship to Hashem that we have. That's what we're supposed to think about on Yom Tov. That's what we're supposed to focus on when we daven on Yom Tov. And we say, we should say it happily, and with meaning, to feel it. And when we say Kiddush on Yom Tov, we say with meaning and feeling, to feel that we're, that we're Kal Yisrael. And this is really sort of an uh, interesting way of starting the Seder because the Seder night starts with Kaddish, with Kiddush. First thing we talk about is Seder night. And so I, once, I was once bothered with the question, Kiddush is not really a p part of the Seder, so we do all year. It's not such a good question. But anyways, a better answer, it's not, I don't know if it needs an answer because we bench too, it's also part of it, but that, I don't know if that's a question. But the answer is, it's the opposite. Kiddush is, is a part of the Seder. It's, it's the beginning of the Seder. It's the only part of the Seder that we do the whole year. Mm -hmm. But Kiddush is part of the Seder. It's part of the Seder because we're thanking Hashem. It's, it's sort of an introduction to the Seder. We're thanking Hashem for creating us as His people, for choosing us as His people. Right? That's what we say by Kiddush. Asher b'chabonu mikol am, that you chose us. Thank you, Hashem. We, we're praising you, Hashem, that you chose us from every other nation and you gave us the beauty of your mitzvahs, you, you chose us out, and that's what we're celebrating on Yom Tov. So, just to review, the second main message of Yom Tov, the second main message of Pesach, and the happiness and the joy of Pesach is the celebration that we became Hashem's chosen people. And that's really what we do by the Seder night. By the Seder night, especially when we get up to the story, what we do is, we do different things on the Seder night to resemble Avdus. We do different things on the Seder night to resemble slavery. And then we do things on Seder night to resemble freedom. Because what we're trying to experience is a personal experience, going from the slavery. So we eat the matzah, we eat the mar to feel the slavery, to try to experience the slavery. Because until you experience the lack of something, 
You'll never appreciate having something. So we first want to have, feel the lack, the pain, the suffering. And then we experience Hashem taking us out, the sitting like kings and dipping and leaning and eating, eating meat at the time of the Karim Pesach and drinking four cups of wine to act like kings and we dress up and that's why we act like royalty to feel the going free and that bring and, and what's the culmination of the Seder night that you gave us the base of Bechir, you gave us the Torah, you brought us to Har Sinai you gave us the base of Mikdash, you gave us Eretz Yisrael you made us into Klal Yisrael and that brings us that brings us to Haida and to Hala if you look at the Seder, that's the idea of the whole Seder night that brings us to sing Shira, to sing Hallo to Hashem, to thank Hashem for making us into Kla Yisrael. So that's the idea of the Seder night, is to, is to feel the joy of becoming Avde Hashem, to feel the joy that Hashem chose us from all the other nations. And that's the joy of all of, all of the different Yom Tavim. Very quickly, what's, now if you don't learn like the Torah, that Sukkot is supposed to be in between Pesach and Shavuot, so then how does Sukkot fit in? So then the question is, well, what does Sukkot represent? So the, the Vilna Gain says that Sukkot doesn't represent the first Ananiya covered. We got the Ananiya covered when we left Mitzrayim, but then we lost the Ananiya covered by the Ego. Clouds of glory. We lost them by the Ego. When we did the sin of the golden calf, we lost the Ananiya covered. But after 40 days where Moshe Rabbeinu went and did Tshuva and Klai saw the Tshuva and they repented and they returned to Hashem, we had a special day. When he gave us again the Luchas Shnias, the second set of Luchas, the second time he gave us the Torah. And that was on which day? Yom Kippur. And Yom Kippur became the day of atonement and the day of appeasement for all of history. Right? And what happened after Yom Kippur? We got the second clouds of glory. And the Vilna says like this, in a relationship between two people, a husband and a wife, any relationship, until you have your first fight, you don't know if it's a strong relationship. As long as everything's hunky-dory and everyone's happy and everything's going smooth, it's great, no problem. When you have your first fight, what happens? Does everyone run? If you just run, that means you never had a relationship. But if you work it through and you figure it out and you get past the fight, that symbolizes that you had a relationship. So Claudius will have to have their first fight with Hashem, so to say, their first mess up. And the fact that they were appeased and given back to second Luchas that's the real building of Klai Yisrael. So that's what we're celebrating. What we're celebrating is not the Luchos Rishonis on Sukkot. We're celebrating the second ones. We're celebrating the re-coming back is part of the creation of Klai Yisrael. So then there's three, the three steps are a little different. Then there's the first step, which is taking us out of Islam. The second step, is, which is giving us the Torah, but it's still not enough. We need the fall and the appeasement. And if you learn like that, then it's very interesting the words in the in the Tzvila. We say like this, You chose us from any every other nation. When was that on Pesach? You loved us. You gave us the Torah. When was that? Shuas. Ratzisa banu. Ratzisa is a lashon of Ritzui. When a person brings a carbon, he gets a Ritzui. Ritzui means he's appeased. He's brought back. Ratzisa banu, and you took us back, that's my Sukkot. So that's the idea of, of those three on the But anyways, the main idea is that Yom Tev is a celebration of becoming Klal Yisrael and, and Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is, is the celebration. When we celebrate Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, we celebrate the idea that Hashem took us out and made us into His nation. And we went from being Avdei Paroi to being Avdei Hashem, which is also from going from Avdei Paroi to being free men. We went from being slaves to being free men. And that's what we celebrate. And that's why the Aserah Sadibur starts off. I took you out of Avadim and I made you mine and that's why you have to listen to me as opposed to everybody else. That's the other shot in that. It's clear. Thank you.